We all love upgrading our bikes to make them lighter. Surely that goes without saying, but not all upgrades are created equal. So when parts of your bike have worn out, is it better to replace them with the same equivalent part or upgrade it? We're gonna go through a list of common parts that people upgrade and present them in a pounds or price per gram saved so that you can decide where best to save and where to spend. Oh, nice, I like that. Yeah, yeah. nice. Oh. First up on our list of upgrades are inner tubes. Incidentally, these are also the most affordable upgrade that you can make to your bike. Now, typically when you get your new bike, manufacturers will install a standard butyl inner tube. That's because they're considered one of the cheapest options available. But there are two other examples which you should consider when you want to look to upgrade. Yeah, so both of these examples are going to offer you significant rolling resistance benefits too. We're talking in the region of five watts per wheel. But we're not bothered about that in this video. I mean, have you seen the state of that climb behind me? Look how steep it is. Now, what we're talking about is latex tubes and TPU inner tubes. Both are gonna be significantly lighter. So, put into context, a butyl tube is about 120 grams and is gonna cost you about five pounds. Now, a latex tube, 85 grams, considerably lighter, it's gonna cost you 15 pounds. However, the other example that we've yet to mention is the latest in technology, a TPU or thermoplastic inner tube. These can typically weigh in the region of 35 grams, almost half the weight of a latex one. However, that weight saving is gonna come at a bit of a premium. For a product such as that, you're gonna be looking in the region of 38 to 40 pounds for one inner tube. So in terms of cost per gram saved, if upgraded into a TPU inner tube, it's around 27 pence per gram saved compared to your latest example, which is around 29 pence per gram saved. Plus the other thing to consider is that although inner tubes are an affordable weight saving upgrade, they're also a consumable part. There's every chance that you might puncture and ruin it on your first ride. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Good point. If you're wondering why Ollie and I stood at the top of this beautiful mountain, was well, to tell you about our next weight-saving upgrade, bottle cages. Now, typically, if you've just bought a new bike, chances are you're gonna have to invest in a new bottle cage anyway. So let me serve you an example. You stand there in the bike shop, looking at an array of fancy bottle cages on the wall, and then you're trying to decide which ones to pick. Yeah, the standard bottle cage, made of alloy, costs around 10 pounds, and weighs about 50 grams. However, something shiny catches your eye. What if it's a matte carbon effect one? I hadn't said carbon yet, but anyway, you might want to consider a carbon bottle cage. And in this instance, you're looking at about half the weight of a standard metal one. However, it's likely to set you back in the region of 50 to 55 pounds, which means it's costing you somewhere in the region of one pound 67 to save each single gram that you're going to have by upgrading, which doesn't feel like it really represents the greatest in terms of value. Or you could just take your bottle cages off to make your bike lighter and not spend any money or sell your existing bottle cages on eBay. Tyres next. Now we're lucky enough to have the support of Pirelli here and fitted to my bike is the P0 race tyre, which I consider a solid upgrade. However, compare this tyre to a slightly more budget-friendly P7 tire, and you're looking at a weight saving of around 75 grams per tire. Now for that Pirelli P0 race, it's gonna set you back around 50, 55 pounds a tire, but it is a premium tire. You know, if you compare it to the more budget-friendly option, they're around sort of 20 to 25 quid a tire. So you're in the realms of that sort of 27p per gram again. So like the like what we saw for the inner tubes. Also, you're able to save the similar amount in terms of rolling resistance. Oh, we're not bothered about rolling resistance in this video. Look how steep this is. Right, Ollie, picture this. You've just picked up your brand new bike. Life is great. 
But then you look down and realise the pedals that are supplied with it are nasty and made of plastic. Well, they don't come with any at all. That's if you're lucky. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, in the examples that Ollie and I use on our bikes, the Wahoo Speedplay pedals, the most budget-friendly option is the comp version. This uses a steel chrome Ollie axle and a nylon body. These cost £135 and weigh 232 grams. Right, well, if you're, if you're going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum, the top of the range are the nano pedals. Mm. They have a titanium alloy axle and a carbon composite body. And that is going to set you back 380 big ones. But it means that you get a weight reduction down to 168 grams. So my quick maths, that's a 60 gram saving and it's costing you around 245 pounds. Yeah, so, but think of the weight saved. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of cost per gram, that's four pounds per gram saved, which I think it's fair to say is on the slightly more premium end of the weight saving scale. Yeah. Yeah, but if you are searching for the lightest option and every gram possible, there's plenty of weight to be saved. Yeah. Wheels next, and these represent a significant upgrade, something that you're probably going to be doing at least a year down the line or more after buying your bike. And it's quite common that entry-level or mid-range bikes come with wheels that are kind of well below the rest of the spec on that bike. This is often a cost-saving thing that bike brands do. They keep the level of the wheels down so that they can give you a better frame and a better group set. Now, changing your wheels, right, well, there's loads of reasons to do it. It's going to save you some weight, probably, but it's also going to make your bike look cooler. And I mean, you can't really put a price on that and it makes it slightly more aerodynamic plus they can improve the ride because deep section wheels and more expensive wheels can have better bearings and also just be stiffer so the handling can feel a bit sharper yeah but we're really focused on the weight oh yeah you've given some good examples but anyway eh, let me give you some examples a uh, more entry or budget spec wheel you could consider maybe the shimano rx010 this wheel set is disc specific and will set you back a mere 180 pounds. Now the weight of this wheel set, 2,159 grams. And in most cases, we'll get the job done perfectly fine. However, if you want to upgrade to the all singing, all dancing wheels, you might consider, say, the Dura-Ace C50 wheel set, the latest wheel set out from Shimano. This is gonna set you back 1,800 pounds, but get this right, you've got the option of saving 725 grams. So wheels are the biggest overall weight saving for a single item, but not the most cost effective. It's gonna set you back an additional 1,620 pounds to save that 725 grams, which is what, two pounds 23 per gram? Give or take. Hmm. Oh, one more thing about upgrading your wheels. Yeah. They're more aerodynamic and it means you're reducing the rotating weight of your bike. Oh, for God's sake. Right, look, rotating weight isn't a thing because of physics, uh -huh. right? I explained this in a video. If you've not seen that video, please watch it. Oh, God. One of my favorite places to upgrade and save weight is your saddle. This is because saddles are very personal and it's one of the most common components that you change on the bike. Likelihood is that the saddle your bike comes with might not suit you. So when you change it, why not also upgrade and save some weight? So the saddle I've upgraded to is a Seller Italia SLR Boost Superflow. And like many saddles, they're available in the same shape, but made out of different materials. Top of the tree and the lightest is often carbon. I mean, come on, this is cycling. <laughs> and this saddle is super light. It weighs just 129 grams. If you compare that to a typical entry-level saddle, they're often upwards of 300 grams. Yeah, but those saddles would only cost 30 pounds, maybe even less in some cases. Whereas that fancy pants saddle you're riding, 285 pounds that thing is. Whew. So working that out in terms of cost per gram saved, you're looking at about one pound 49 pence per gram. Mid-table in our upgrades. <laughs> yeah, fair. Well, that's our list of weight saving upgrades. It's not exhaustive, so let us know your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments section below. We're going to go ride home now, and quite depressingly, because I'm feeling absolutely tired out. That tower, if you can see it in the background, 
That's where GCN Mobile Megabase is parked. We've got to ride all the way up there. I'm going to need some more lightweight upgrades from a bike. Thumbs up, subscribe, you know Wish the us drill. Luck. Wish us luck. Bye. Well, at least it's downhill to start. Oh, God's sake.